to... Okay, the problem with your slides is they look horrible and they don't look like this. But you can get the gist from your slides. So this is a uterus. You saw me click it. The way I know that's a uterus is there's a white space up here. That's the lumen where the baby would live. And then you see these long, we call them snakes, but they're not snakes. These are glands, right? This is the endometrium. This is the part that you would grow and slough off during your ovulatory cycle. So if you see a white space with these funny-looking snake-like things, that's your uterus, and that's the endometrium of the uterus. Looking at that picture, can you guess for me which parts of stratum functionalis versus the stratum basalis? Can you see a difference? Where's the functionalis be the, towards the limit? And the bottom part Yell when you think about the, the stratum basale. You're saying that's the basale? Yes. Not yet. Yeah, now. Yeah. So there's no line in the sand. It's not like in Skinner you just draw a line. but. You can tell that this part looks different than this part in terms of density and shape. So the stratum functionalis is about here up, stratum basalis is about here down. Right? But it's no, there's no magical spot. Right? You can kind of see it. So if I do another <coughs> picture, uterus again, I have white space, I have worms. Okay? Functionalis would be from here to about uh, about maybe about an A. Yeah. Right. Okay. Basalis about here to here. Hey, what's this? This muscle. What's that? My myometrium. Myometrium. So you want to look for uterus and be able to figure out kind of vaguely where the line is. It's kind of a judgment call, right? But unfortunately, your slides are pretty bad for that. Plus you. This one. What is that? Uterine tube. Uterine tube or oviduct fallopian tube. How would I know that if I saw that? Snowflake. It looks like a snowflake. Very good. So it oftentimes has a snowflake. It doesn't always, but looks like a snowflake. You're also going to notice it has muscle. How much muscle compared to a vast difference? Less. Less. So it's a tube, right? It has muscle, but it doesn't have as much as a vast deference. Mm -hmm. It also has this funny snowflakey kind of appeal to it. Vast definitely does not. And just to show you that it varies somewhat, I mean the vast, uh, the oviducts on the right, so again you can tell the tube, you can tell there's muscle but not as much and then this is sort of strange. So it varies a lot but you get the idea of snowflake with a little bit of muscle. And what's that on the left? That's a vein. That's a vein. That's a 232 word. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's zoom in on my uterine tube, shall I? Yeah. I shall. So, what do you call the snowflake? Folded mucosa. Folded mucosa. Who else had mucosal folds? Yellow gland. Looks good. Two words. Sounds like. Seminal vesicle. <laughs> Seminal vesicle. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> So we have mucosal folds or folded mucosa. If you look carefully, there'd be some cilia on there. You can barely, barely figure out that they're there. But there'd be cilia to help move the, the sperm and egg along. Right? So again, it looks similar to the male tubes, but it's just different looking in terms of the structure. Then we're going to do our last one for the girl slides. This would be the esophagus if it wasn't in the wrong place of your body. Vagina. That's a vagina because it has what kind of tissue? Transplantation. And usually, but not always, they have this waviness to them, and then they have these mucosal exudate glands like that. But it looks like an esophagus because same kind of things for protection. So stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Okay. Every time. Is it close up? So if I squamous, kind of okay those? Uh, All right, let's let's do breasts. Let's do boobs. Okay. All right, okay. get a model of something here. I hope so. <coughs> All right, let's do this one. Let's do number three. Nipple. That's a nipple. Let's do number one. There we go. That's a colored ring. Let's do. Kind of five. 
What are fives? That's like a lot of both. Lobes. Lobes. That is lobes. So you want to think longish, right? Yeah. So lobes are each chunk, for lack of a better word. So here's sort of a chunk, here's sort of a chunk, here's sort of a chunk. So they're lobes, just like in your lungs. Oh, that's what it's pointing at. I it was pointing at the, I mean, well, that was about yeah. the yellow stuff. Kind of. It's not supposed to be the yellow stuff. It's supposed to be black stuff. Yeah. So then Maybe. let's look. In each chunk, you notice there's little regions. Like here's a lump, here's a lump. Here's a lump on the bigger lump. What do you call smaller lumps on big lumps? Lobules. Lobules. Same thing. So we went from the mountain range to the group of hills. <laughs> then, if you look carefully, each one of these has little teeny circles on it. What do you think those would be if that were a lump? Lobules. What do you call them in a breast? Lobules. Exactly the same. They're sacs. <coughs> so the lobes have lobules, the lobules have circles. Right? So each rock on the mountain in the Cascade Range. Another way to look at it, this is a really kind of ugly strained model, but it works. If I zoom in on that. So if it were me, this is sort of a lobe. This is sort of a lobe. It's like a pomegranate. That's sort of, yeah, pomegranate kind of lobe. Let's say, well then, this is a lobule, this is a lobule, that's a lobule because it's three things in one. And then each circle, I would say, is an alveolus. Okay, that's kind of how I interpret it. You can get people arguing about that. But you're basically breaking down the bumps. Then let's see. Oh, hey, what's this big funny tube? That's a duck. duck, which is actually a milk duck. It's perfectly allowed to say milk duck, but milk. this is a doctor word, right? Like tiferous. <laughs> the hard thing to catch on to is right here. This one's hard to see because they're called. Like sinus? <laughs> yes, there's a sinus. Let me zoom out here a little bit. What number four would Look at number four. Yeah, so it's closer to that. Yeah, number four. Right. So each milk duct comes down, there's a little teeny sinus or space where each duct before the nipple. That's the closest you get to an udder in a primate. It's right there. Those are the sinuses. Would you accept milk sinus? You're going to accept milk duct. Depends on my mood, but officially no. <laughs> That's how argumentative I want to be that day. Right. Yeah, that's how much caffeine I had, so that was chocolate. You know. Is that Diet Coke? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Diet Coke, Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> Noted. So, oh, one more thing. What's this white tissue that looks like it's hanging down? Suspensory so ligaments. ligaments. That's what holds them up, is the, the ligaments basically from your chest muscles hang them down. Right. So what's six? Six? I was going to say pectoralis. Versus six. Let's see what that is. What? Looks like that. Is that the suspension? Yeah. Is that the suspension? Yeah. That response for whether it would be the rest of the team or the front. Yep. And just to the right. That might be the suspension. Yep. Kind of between the white and. Between nine and five. Yeah. So as gravity wears out or whatever, you just, like any ligament, you can stretch it. Over time, more. Breast lift is going to back right there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Or if you strengthen the chest yeah. muscles here, as they contract, they'll pull the ligaments a little harder. But yeah, gravity is ligaments stretch, they tend not to want to go back. Mm -hmm. so that's the reality of it. So today we're supposed to look at a slide of this. Okay. All right, let's do mammary gland slide. slide you have, there's some variability here, so don't overanalyze. But this is a breast tissue, mammary gland, whatever you want to call it. And these circles represent the actual glands or alveoli making the milk. So everything you see is background and just connective tissue or fat. The milk is actually these things. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at those circles and have like gut reaction. Are they kind of big or little compared to everything else that's there? So the big. larger big. filled space that's with the glands, is yep. that just a really large gland or is that like a duct? That's going to be a duct. That's going to be a tube. 
So compared to everything else, they seem like there's a lot of them or a few of them? Few. 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 Big or small, kind of. Small. They're kind of small. So this, this would be an inactive or not lactating one. You're not making milk. What you want to do is take a picture of that with your head, right? And then compare it to this one here. What do you notice? Lots. A lot more glands. And fatter. They're bigger. There's more of them. They're shoved everywhere. And you're compressing the other tissue. So as, I, as you milk more, these get bigger. Hence, there's their larger size. Right? You can see that they're producing more fluid. It's just obviously there's more activity. So lactating. Right? The problem is you can end up with ones that look kind of in between. Exactly. Like that one, <laughs> it looks like it's active. That looks right, now J-Doc says that's inactive. If I looked at that, active. I would probably say active just because I know how inactive things look. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I understand that there's, you can do that. I'm not overly concerned with how precise you are. But here's one that's actually lactating. Ooh, that's real big. Thick. Those are huge, right? Here's the milk, right? Huge alveoli and get the whole stinking thing, right? So basically the size of the gland should increase as activity goes up. So on your slide, you're going to see something that's not quite like this. You're probably going to see something like maybe something like this versus something like that. You can make that distinction, then you understand the difference. Make sense? Okay, so what I'm going to do for just a couple minutes, I'm going to randomly hit you with a slide. I know that's where you want to start. And we're going to do some slide naming playing. Just a second to get the page. Go right here. Interstitial there? Yeah. They're like actually moving around there, yeah. Shake, skate. No, that's just. <laughs> oh, okay. Spurs. They shouldn't be out there, no. They shouldn't be there. <laughs> they are out there. They got out of the. Uh, they got the active. Activator. They got the activator. They're on speed. <laughs> low magnification, so it's a little different. Lots of circles Let me zoom in on that. Oh, yeah. It's kind of thick, though. It'll look like that. Seminal vesicle. Like a sponge. Like a sponge. Here's my mucosal folds. Here's my smooth muscle. That's my sponge. That's easier to see. That's a sponge. Seminal vesicle. That's the gland behind your lap. I can't see the rice patties. Let's try. It's an eye. It's testes. It is testes. Very good. Oh, wow. So, let me play with that one for a second and then ask you something specifically about it. Yeah, or it looks like an evil man. One of those puppy seed things. Dandelion. So, when you say testes, though, would you accept some numbers to be? Yes. Plus, yes. So, where my mouse is pointing, that cell there. Interstitial. Daniel, yes, interstitial <laughs> cells, or Leydig cells. Right? The ones that are between the circles. Right. Too easy, drill sergeant. Yep. No problem. You gotta tip your head sideways. <coughs> That's a penis! 
That's a penis. Oh. Right? An angry clown. Right? <laughs> so let's name this red line here. That is... Abu Jinia. So all this must be the myonemetrium. Very good. So look for those worm <laughs> type things. Spaghetti, some people call it. Whatever. So try this one. Let's do.